Well, hello, everybody, and welcome. It is time for us to catch up with, and here's the key thing, because we used to be calling this product uh, Super 6 Racing, and as you might have heard, because we said there was going to be a name change, uh, we officially have a Global Team Horse Racing, uh, but it's the same person, and it's the same concept, and it's very exciting. So uh, Angus Campbell joins me. Angus, uh, great to uh, catch up with you, and that's literally what we're going to do, because there's been a huge amount of change and a lot of steps, positive steps forward. Absolutely, Neil. Always good to chat to you. Um, yeah, so let, let's start with the, the name change. So Super Sex Racing has been our working title for the last two years. Um, the, the trials we did last year, the focus groups, the Summerfeld trials, the Gravel trials were all done under Super Sex Racing. Um, and then once we, once we worked out what we needed to work out with our product, we, as a team, uh, mostly based in the UK, um, and obviously here in South Africa, decided that we were going to launch officially as Global Team Horse Racing, which we have now done. And the reason we did that is because we managed to secure the funding for a full series of GTH races, which is going to take place this year. So, so that was the big, that was the big good news, if you like, that we could now, after all the testing and trialing and and working on how our product works. We could now for the first time announce that we're going to do a full series, um, which which we're now going to do in, in uh, 2022. That's this year. So that's all very exciting. Before I move on to um, talk about how we've gone from this uh, product uh, or practicing, I should say, and uh, these dry runs to actually having a product and a broadcast product as well. Let's just go back a bit for folks who might not have watched this before. Um, and touch really on the basics of global team horse racing. What fundamentally is it about? How is it? There's three questions here. What is it fundamentally about? How is it different to traditional horse racing? And is it designed to replace horse racing? Uh, answer those three for us. Um, so let, let me give you a, a general answer to all three of those. Um, but firstly, no, it's not designed to replace traditional horse racing, if you like. It's designed to bring new fans to the sport of racing. So that's that's the number one goal in terms of everything that we do. Mm. And to do that, we've had to develop a new product, which is um, in line with what sports around the world are doing. So firstly, we had to be fast paced because that's just how the world is today. Um, we had to be relatively easy to understand. And that has been a big problem with, if you like, traditional horse racing. It can be quite complex, um, especially if you're not... Um, someone who's had a lot of history in terms of understanding how the racing works, the weights, the betting, all that kind of thing. And, and lastly, it needed to be interesting for this new fan base. It needed to grab their attention. It needed to, it needed to make them stop and go, hang on a second, this is something that I like. This is something that I could get into. Um, and we always, well, we often use the comparison of uh, T20 and cricket. So you had, you know, you've got test match cricket, 50 over cricket, and then eventually you had T20 cricket, and you even have the 100 now. So we like to say we're at that stage of developing 50 over or T20 cricket for horse racing. It's, it's not designed to replace traditional racing, but it is designed to do something new and different and bring in a new audience who possibly wouldn't have been interested in the sport before. Okay, perfect. Um, well, that sums it up. Just very quickly, the, the, the team element, because some people speak to me, they're very excited about that, but they don't quite understand why, why Global obviously speaks to the fact that we want to launch it. It's uh, hopefully going to um, spread its wings from South Africa further afield and become global. Um, and it's something that you can recreate in other countries. That's um, fairly straightforward. But where does the team element come in? So when we started putting these um, products together, uh, probably three, four years ago now, we, we looked at what other sports have been doing and it became clear that one of the big problems we have with, with horse racing is that all horses run in individual colors, depending on who their owners and trainers are. So one of the first things we did is we started trialing a team-based format. Now, horse racing has done team-based racing before. In this country, we have Jockeys International, and there's a few things around the world that happen, but not on a regular basis. So mm. essentially what the teams allow us to do, it allows us to have one, two, or more teams competing against each other in a way that fans can then understand, firstly, and secondly, then connect with. Um, so you, as you support your, your football team or your rugby team or your cricket team, for the first time, you'd now be able to support your horse racing team. Mm. So, so that makes it, it easy to understand for our fans in that they can go, okay, cool, well, that's my team. I'm going to support my team. So when we did the trials, we started putting the jockeys into those teams. 
Mm. So the horses don't necessarily run in teams because the horses only run once, maybe twice in a series, but the jockeys are allocated to a team and they run in a team throughout the length of the series. So um, that's quite exciting because we're about to launch our, our first name drop, if you like, of who our jockeys will be for the series this year, which, again, we've never done before, but suddenly or well, finally uh, fans can say, well, I like that jockey, I like that team, I like that province, I like that name, as you would in the IPL or Formula One, and you can get behind your team. So that's a, it's a very, very big part of, of what we do. Um, and the next thing to say about the teams is we do a head-to-head format. So we only have two teams competing at any racing race meeting. Um, for the series in August, September, we'll have three teams going head-to-head, two at a time. So uh, team one and two on uh, the first event, team two and three on the second event, and then the, the, the other two teams will compete at the third event, and then the best of those teams will compete in the final in September. Oh. And then you'll have one winner at the end of that series. So I've jumped ahead a little bit, Neil, but um, yeah, that, that's that's answering the team question, if that makes sense. Yeah, and having been involved myself, which I thoroughly enjoyed down at the Gravel trial, um, the simplification of it is is simply that fans are, oh, we've seen it there, um, fans are rooting for red, you know, and you're shouting on your red horses. Um, so it's, it's a lot more accessible in terms of that um, than having, as you say, in a field of 12, you know, you've got to spot your colours, you've got to spot your jockey and, and so forth. So... Um, I get that team element that, you know, fundamentally, as long as you're seeing three yellow horses flash across the post, first, second, third, you know your team have done well. Yeah, so we, we, we've we also, through those trials that you mentioned, we've had to come up with a few digital innovations so that we can show you in the broadcast exactly where your team is and how they're performing. So I won't say too much about that now, but we've had to embrace as much technology and digital innovation as we could so that we make that team element come alive, if you like, not just for the pe- person at the track, but for somebody watching on on TV. Television. Right. And that's where I want to take this conversation now, because we've touched on, on some of those basics, but we have moved. You've moved now from trials to producing a product. And that means, of course, a focus on the broadcast, the television element. Uh, you can tell us a little bit. I know you've got um, the backing of Supersport in that regard. Um, So we are moving now literally from trials and concept to a product. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, it's getting real now, Neil. Um, So we needed three things. Number one, um, we needed uh, a racing operator that we could partner with. So we managed to do that with Gold Circle. We trialed with them last year. We formed a good relationship. Uh, They understood what we were trying to do, and we were able to fit into their structures um, and we now have a, a concrete agreement with them in place. And to that end, we've agreed to put 3 million rands uh, of stakes into our racing events. And those are over and above and additional to all racing events that are currently happening in the tell uh, for Gold Circle. So these are not Gold Circle race meetings, which we've now sponsored. We've actually added race meetings onto the calendar so that there's extra race meetings and extra um, stakes money going into the pot in Gold Circle. In the tail four gold circle. Mm. The second thing we needed um, was a broadcast partner, which we've now done. We've now achieved that with Supersport. And all four racing events will be broadcast live from start to finish on a Friday night, uh, three weeks in August, and, and the final will be in September. So that's great news for us as well. And then lastly, we needed the funding, um, which we now have. So those three things are in place. Agreements have been signed, and we are now officially launching the first GTH series, which will take place here in, in South Africa. It's very exciting, Angus, and congratulations to all concerned. Um, I do know, though, that when you talk about broadcasting, um, we we are looking at a modern broadcast, so the modern sports broadcast. So if I, you mentioned T20, obviously, which is hugely successful. But if you think of Formula One and the way it's created itself with drive to survive, et cetera, you're looking to do the same thing. So it's not just a normal traditional sports broadcast. It's leading edge in that regard, telling stories behind it. Um, So there's that element. And also then the sharing of this data, which is very important. So the, the data collection and the usage of that to, again, enhance the broadcast and to get buy in from from customers, clients. Absolutely. So, Neil, the reason that's also important to us is because now that we have the team-based format, we can we can compete in the sports entertainment world where we couldn't before. So, for example, we can compete for sponsors. 
Mm. We can compete for team owners. Uh, we can compete in the merchandising front. So all of those things are new. But sponsors um, and potential team owners and even the broadcasters want to know the same thing. How many fans are you talking to? Who are these fans? Where are they? And obviously, what is their buying power? So everything that we've done up to now, which is basically build the product, is now going to be transferred into broadcast. And how do we turn that broadcast into something that makes sense financially for all of these different parties? Um, so it's very exciting. I, I, won't, I won't bore you with the details, but it's, it's the way of the modern world in terms of sponsorship. Um, you can't just say we have so many eyes watching on TV. That doesn't fly anymore. They want to know who are your fans, um, where are they, and, and is it worth us getting involved with you? And that's why the data and the digital elements are, are so important to what we're doing. Okay. Um, what I've got here, uh, I've got a couple of things I just want to share with you. This is um, this is a press release that went out, which, uh, and I think we've pretty covered this, explained the who, the what, the where, the when, the why, and the how. And as you said to me before, and Neil, we've done this a few times. But um, And, of course, the thing is about clocking the gallop, if you wanted to go back and historically look at some of the chats I've had with Angus, you can do that. Um, but the other bit that I wanted to share with you, because you've got some facts as well, and um, uh, with that, this is probably worth just touching on briefly just to show people so they can get familiar with the logo, Global Team Horse Racing. There it is. So when you see GTH, you know what it is. Um, and we've got some of these um, questions that you've answered here, um, which is what is Global Team Horse Racing? When and where will the events take place? I don't want to get too involved in specifics, but I do want to just put these dates down because those are the dates that we're looking at with the broadcast, of course. And um, it is going to be, at the risk of confusing matters, it's going to be an evening entertainment, so night racing. So um, it's complementing uh, the day's racing, which will be different racing, obviously. Um, but it's also something that you're looking at is that people will come racing and have an evening of it and engage and basically um, have fun and entertainment. Absolutely. So just like um, night cricket, if you like, um, you can come sort of after work. It is all about the family. So you'll bring your family. Um, it's fast paced, as we've mentioned before. It builds on what Gold Circle have done in their 2020 league, where they run the races every 20 minutes, which is which is pretty good going. Mm. Um, and that means we get all, all of our races done in two, two and a half hours. Um, which means, you know, that's quite different to a normal race, uh, racing event during the day. Um, but it, it means that, yeah, you can come straight off to work as you would for a T20 match, enjoy the evening with us or watch on TV and, and head home or, if, you know, for, for those who like partying, go out and party afterwards. But it's family friendly. So, so that's the main focus of, of the live events, if you like. Yeah, I'm just scrolling down here because there's a lot of information to impart and, um, you, of course, Angus, I'll ask them you to give your contact details of where they can get uh, more information, this kind of information on a website later. But, um, yeah, touching on the other entertainments is live DJ. And you're catering, obviously, for the family element. So, and we're going to get to that in a moment um, with the junior element, which is very exciting, I feel. But um, the other entertainments that will be there, um, you know, the jumping glasses, face paint. So you can bring the family. You're encouraging them to bring the family. Absolutely. Um, and, and Neil, just as I'm looking at that um, list of questions, you know, we, we, we get a lot of people saying to us, well, um, is this quite, is, you know, is this gimmicky and, and what about, will the NHRA be involved? It's, it's, these are formal races on the racing calendar. We've had meetings with the NHRA. Um, we've taken them through everything we'd like to do. They've come back to us and said, okay, those things you can do, those things you can't do. All the rules and regulations will be implemented by the NHRA and Gold Circle. So um, it's it's official. It's it's real horse yeah. racing, if you like. Just because it's fast-paced and team-based, it doesn't change the fact that it's it's still, you know, regular horses running with real jockeys. Um, there are some slight changes, for example, in a, not not changes, but things that we're doing. For example, in a team, you'll have top-level jockeys, medium-level jockeys, and a couple of apprentices. And, and that's what makes it interesting because your team captain um, will get to place that those jockeys from the team on the horses that are allocated to that team in the weeks leading up to the event. So, right. so that's what gives it a bit of a, a bit of spice, if you like, is that... A bit of strategy. Because the race... Completely, a bit of strategy. And now, because the races are so close to each other, a jockey can only ride in every second race. 
So your team captain then has to say, well, I can't put that jockey on race one and two. You can only ride race one and three. Mm. So which jockey am I going to put on which horse? The other interesting thing is um, there'll be a double points probably at the last race. Um, so then you need to decide, well, which which jockey I'm going to put on my most important race or am I going to go for one of the other races? So so these are the things that we're going to bring to life during the broadcast. Um, yeah. Our presenters and our announcers will be interviewing the team captains, will be inter interviewing the team principal, talking about why they've placed which jockey and which horse and why they've done what they've done in a way that we're going to hope will bring alive the actual element of race horse racing that, that a lot of people or our fans at least don't understand. Yeah. And if I could just come in there, Angus, I mean, the knock-on effect, and I think we've seen that with cricket is that because you've got a new product um, that's exciting and appeals to a younger audience and a new audience, um, that audience, once they liked a bit of cricket or, or um, T20, they're more likely because now they're familiar with cricket to sit down and watch a test match. Um, the same we hope will happen with the racing, right? That um, people who've never been racing before will say, well, hang on, this is very interesting. I love the, I love the vibe, I love the intensity, the speed, the color, the noise. And actually, maybe I'll go to Gravel next week, Saturday. Um, you know, when traditional racing is put on and see if there's an appeal there or buy or share in a race or something. So it, it's generally built to, to make racing and horses and, and the sport more accessible and more appealing to a wider audience. Would that be a fair comment? Absolutely. So as you know, Neil, we've been involved in racing events for, for almost 10 years. And one of the things that used to really, I guess, worry us was that we would get lots of people to these big events. You know, we did the Summer Cup for many years, had 15,000 people there, but they weren't watching the racing. So hopefully through what we're doing now, when people get to um, Hollywood Bets, uh, Durban July, the Met, Summer Cup, etc not only will they be there for the fashion and, and the party and whatever they will actually start taking a big interest in the racing that's happening mm. so so that's where we're coming from is that we need to educate people and get people to understand and like and enjoy racing and absolutely that should have a should have a knock-on effect all those other big events okay um where can i find further information i, I was going to ask you to give it but now we'll leave it on screen so you don't have to do all of that kind of stuff but while that's on screen um i do want to just go to something which personally, I think is, is a tremendous initiative and very exciting. And that is the Junior League, Junior League GTH Racing. So this has now also become real in so much as you are currently up and running with a junior pilot training program. Um, tell us a bit about that, because that is also speaking to the next generation. Yeah, so Neil, when we did our um, sponsored research in the UK uh, and in South Africa as well, um, the feedback we got was was very clear. Um, younger audiences, new audiences are very, very keen on obviously environment, climate, social awareness, all those those very good things. Mm. And racing has struggled for many years because obviously there's traditionally no under 18s allowed at racing events, especially if there's a focus on betting. Yes. So by having a family friendly product, um, we said, okay, cool, we're going to get people to the racing events. But when we looked at other sports um, around the world, they all had a huge focus on getting young people to play those sports. Now, the reason they did that was not because they needed professional athletes in that sport later on, because only about 1% of rugby, cricket, soccer players who play as, as juniors or kids go on to play professionally. But many of them, and I can't give you a number, but many, a big percentage go on to become fans of that sport. So that's why those sports, especially American franchise businesses, focus so heavily on getting kids to play those sports. Because even if they don't take it up for life, you know, you know, they might only play till they're 20, 25, they will almost certainly become a lifelong fan. So that's something we've decided to tackle. And our junior league tackles that. We have young kids uh, trialing or involved in a pilot at the moment who are involved in us putting together a program where children will be able to go sort of Saturday and Sunday morning as you would for rugby, cricket, soccer, but you'll be doing your GTH racing on your ponies. Um, it's just started, but it's looking good. The feedback from the kids has been amazing. It's great to see them outdoors, off their almost said appliances, but um, <laughs> yes. phones, iPads, etc. It's good to see them in the sun, running around on the grass, looking after the animals. That's a, that's a that's a big part of what we need to do. They need to understand that the horses, the horses, everything in our sport. 
Um, it's about caring for the horse, looking after the horse, understanding the horse. And that's what these kids are seeing. And ironically, they are becoming slowly but surely our biggest advocates because they are the most passionate um, supporters and lovers of, of the horses. Yeah, I hear, hear to that. And uh, they are beautiful uh, animals, uh, wonderful athletes, and just the, the sheer beauty of the equine uh, thoroughbred is fantastic. So uh, and you're right, people go to these big races, and sometimes I speak, they don't even know there's a race going on because they're propped up in the bar. And, uh, you know, at, at best, they might be wandering around asking someone where they can put their two ram, but they're not engaged at all. So it's something I know that's very key to GTH racing. Well, Angus, we're going to leave it there. Um, and maybe a final message for you out there. Uh, where do folks who are excited about this keep track of its progress? The dates are in place. What are sort of the next steps for GTH racing? Um, so the, the next step is to basically follow us on our social media pages. Uh, we are gthracing.co.za. Um, updates will, 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 be, will be listed there. And then obviously you will start seeing our adverts on Supersport soon, um, which is also great. And for those in Natal, those in Durban, um, look out for our adverts for the Friday night events um, from the first Friday in August um, and throughout August and to the final in September. And bring your family. I mean, that's the important thing. Don't come on your own. Don't leave the wife and the kids behind because that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for you to come down, bring your kids, uh, bring your nephews, nieces, and have a bit of fun. Absolutely. Look forward to seeing you all there. Angus, thank you very much. Angus Campbell talking about uh, GTH, Global Team Horse Racing. And uh, it's here. It's here to stay. You've heard about the progress. It's a new name, Global Team Horse Racing. Supersport are involved with the broadcast of it. And that's where we're at. No longer trials, folks. It's a product. It's real. And uh, you can track it. Angus, thanks for your time. Thanks, Neil.